Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bots in this video is the 1985 Generation 1 Minibots. My review of the 1984 Minibots was so popular, I decided to pull these down off the shelf. Now, these figures here were part of the second wave of Transformers in 85, and as a result, was featured heavily in the cartoon and comic book. Though not as much in the comics as the cartoon, but man, these guys were portrayed as some awesome characters, especially Beachcomber, Powerglide, and Warpath here. Now, what was really cool about these figures is they looked a lot more like the cartoon counterparts than the 84 ones, which to me added to a lot more playability. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at the second wave of these awesome little figures. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now we'll start things off by looking at the 1985 G1 Minibots in their vehicle modes. And from left to right, we have Beachcomber, Cosmos, Powerglide, Sea Spray, and Warpath. And we'll take a look at Beachcomber first. Beachcomber is the only car out of the entire line, and he is a blue dune buggy, and a really cool looking dune buggy at that. I love the molded details on this figure. You got the engine there on the back. You got the roll cage right there. And if you look on the inside, you can make out the seats along with a steering wheel. Down on the hood, you've got the Autobot rub symbol, headlights and some big beefy tires along with some details right there on the side now the only thing i really don't like about beachcomber it's not that i don't like i just wish that they had given him like big off-road tires instead of these racing slicks but it is what it is the figure rolls really really good now transformation for beachcomber super simple you're going to take the side the wheels and this blue section right here and just pull these straight out. You'll see a, here a little click. Go ahead and take the front section and you'll rotate this around. Now, when you're doing this and you're pressing against the figure, make sure you're pressing up here against the engine instead of the roll cage because you don't want to break that. Go ahead and flip those all the way around. Take this blue section here, flip it up, and there you have Beachcomber in robot mode. And Beachcomber is the only one out of the entire line that really doesn't look like his Generation 1 cartoon counterpart. And that's mainly due to the head sculpt right here, which is very robotic looking. And now that I'm looking at it really close, I think it looks like Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. But still, pretty cool looking robot. I like the molded details there on the chest, the stickers... Uh, let's see, Articulation, Beachcomber, he's a G1, the arms can do a complete 360, the head can look up and down, and I guess he's got a knee bend due to transformation. So, there is Beachcomber. Next up is Cosmos, the UFO. Yeah, if you're going to hide as a Earth-style vehicle, might as well be a UFO. Now, I'm trying to hold mine together, he is a little loose. Cosmos has a lot of nice details as well. I like the molded in blasters there on the front and he's got molded in thrusters on the back. Got some panels all around, big sticker right there on the front along with the Autobot rub symbol. 
Cosmos does have wheels underneath. He's got four wheels staggered about. You got two here on the front and back. Let's see, front and back and two on the side. So he can roll decent enough. I mean, he's not going to roll across the table like Beachcomber. So there's Cosmos in UFO mode to transform him. You're going to take the front section, pull out, and flip down while flipping this section up, forming the feet. Then you're going to take these side panels and work them up along this groove right here. So you kind of bring these up, rotate forward, do the same with the other side. There we go. And you're going to take this little red section here, pull straight up, and there's Cosmos in robot mode. And he's fairly close to his G1 cartoon counterpart, though he doesn't look as squat. Now, Cosmos here, I'm not the biggest fan of his robot mode, and that's mainly due to his head sculpt, because it's a red cylinder, and you can barely make out the face sculpt due to, well, I don't even think that's paint. The red section's painted, the yellow is just the yellow plastic. It just doesn't look good, but hey, it's G1. Articulation for Cosmos. The arms can do a complete 360. Mine are a little tight, don't want to force it, but you get the idea. So there is Cosmos. Next up, if I can get Cosmos to stand up, is Power Glide, and this is one of my favorites. This is a big mini bot, and one of the first Autobots that we had, that was an aerial vehicle, and he is an A-10 Warthog, and I love that. He looks so good. Though I do wish he had some paint applications for the cockpit. You can see the gun right there on the front. He's got the thrusters or the intakes. He looks really, really good. Bottom of the figure, he does have landing gear. It's some, I'm not sure what you call those. They're, they'll, they'll be arms later on. He does have visible robot head syndrome, but it is what it is for a G1. Sticker decal right there rub symbol there. Now that detail or that decal right there is a toy hacks decal that I added because he didn't have an Autobot symbol when I got this one. To transform Power Glide, you just pull the back section down, rotate the wings around like so. There are They are attached together. So you rotate one, the other is going to move. Go ahead and flip the wings up along the side of the body. Actually, let's go ahead and rotate the head around first. Now press the wings against the side of the body. Go ahead and pull these sections out. These are the robot arms. And there you have Power Glide in robot mode. And he looks close to his animated model as well, especially the head sculpt, though he looks kind of sad. Maybe it's because he has a screw right there in the middle of his forehead. So decent enough looking robot mode articulation. Arms can do a complete 360 all the way around. They can also go out. They can go in, and I guess this is an elbow bend in a way, or a bicep bend. He can do an Optimus Primal chest pound if he wanted. So, yeah, Power Glide, decent enough. So, next up is Sea Spray, another one of my favorites as a kid. He is a hovercraft, and he's got wheels underneath too, so you can kind of roll him along the ground, pretend it's the water. Lots of nice molded details all the way around with him as well. Got some stickers right there and the rub symbol. He also has these propellers on the back that can spin. Now, right this day and age, trying to find a G1 sea spray with these propellers intact can be a challenge. I went quite a, through quite a few of these that was always missing a piece. So I finally lucked out and have a complete one. Now the transform sea spray, Really simple, once again, you're going to pull this section out all the way to it clicks, rotate up, forming the feet, flip this section with propellers up, which will reveal his head, and just slide these sections forward for the arms. And Sea Spray in robot mode also looks really, really close to his animated counterpart. I dig his robot mode. He's tall. He's very I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just like his robot mode. I think it's so cool. Love the head sculpt. The details just work. And his proportions seem right. He's just a really good robot. Articulation. Arms can do it. Well, no, they can't. He cannot do a th complete 360 because the arms are going to hit this section right here that the propeller's on. But how many guys twirl the arms around anyway? 
So there you go. There is Sea Spray. <clears throat> and last up is Warpath, the tank. And Warpath is just awesome. I love Warpath. He ranks right up there with Sea Spray as one of my favorite mini bots. And he is just great. I just I can't rave enough about Warpath. Love the details with the tank treads right there. You can even see the details on the treads along with the wheels. Lots of molded detail all along the tank. The turret can do a complete 360. He can fire in all directions. There is wheels underneath, so he can roll. This guy just looks so good. He just I, There's not enough good things I can say about Warpath. Transformation for Warpath is about the same as Sea Spray. You're going to pull this section out and then rotate this whole section forward as you bring the section with the turret up, that gray section right there. You're going to bring that up, pull the arms out like so. That one's a little tight. Bring this all the way up, push the turret back. That'll keep the um, gray section from folding down, kind of locks it in place. Flip the hatch up, revealing Warpath's head. And there we have Warpath in robot mode, and he just looks awesome and very much like his cartoon counterpart. Now, taking a closer look at the head sculpt, you've got black eyes with a mouth plate. There was another version of Warpath that had the eyes were not painted, but the mouth plate was painted black. So I think they called that bearded Warpath, but I'm glad I got this one with the painted eyes. Got molded in fist right there. Let's see, robot details. You got some decals or molded detail right there for the chest. Looks really good. Articulation, the arms can do a complete 360 and the turret can still move. It can do a complete 360 as well if you bring the arms up flat like so. So that way nobody's sneaking up on Warpath. He can blast them from behind. And now for some quick size comparisons, here's the 1985 Generation 1 Minibots with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Titan's Return Beachcomber, Thrilling 30 Cosmos, Combiner Wars Power Glide, Titan's Return Sea Spray, and Kingdom Warpath. The 1985 Generation 1 Minibots were more great figures for the original Transformers line. These guys were fun, they were durable, and what was best of all, for me at least, was they looked just like their cartoon and comic counterparts, which to me added a lot more play value. I couldn't begin to tell you how many adventures I had with these guys as a kid, and pulling them down off the shelf for this review just brought back all that nostalgia for me. So there you go guys, the 1985 Generation 1 Minibots. So... Does the 1985 Generation 1 Minibots belong in your collection? Well, if you're a G1 collector, absolutely. These are fantastic little toys that aren't only great figures, but they represent some fantastic characters from our childhood, especially Earth-loving Beachcomber here and Pow Wham Zoom Warpath. These guys are great. I had so much fun with these as a kid, and yeah, if you see these out, don't hesitate. Pick them up. You are not going to be disappointed. Plus, I believe a few of them, I know Warpath here, has recently been reissued, so you may be able to find one at a fairly decent price. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours, blam, that help keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!